In this video we'll cover up to 3x faster cycles rendering with K cycles with the new rendering sampling features in 3.5. These features include cycles better handling of overexposed scenes for adaptive sampling, the new light tree sampling, and improved K cycles performance. Here is the latest performance chart comparing K cycles to the same cycles vanilla build of Blender 3.5. Test done with the default cycles final render settings of a noise threshold of 0.01 and samples of 4096 without the denoiser uh, using the NVIDIA RTX 3090. There's some nice improvements in K cycles. Let's look at the cycles performance improvement due to better handling overexposed and high brightness scenes with adaptive sampling. Up to 3x performance is possible, but the typical speed improvement is 5 to 10% with the same perceived image quality for most general scenes. And this overexposed monkey will show the possible improvements with this new sampling feature. I have loaded the scene into vanilla blender 3.41, adjusted the Final rendering settings to the default, 0 0.01, and maximum samples of 4096 without the denoiser. Let's do a final render and check the final time. The final render is done. Check on the top corner, it took 2 minutes and 13 seconds. All my tests were done using the RTX 3090. Now I've loaded this scene into Blender 3.5 and have the same final settings, 0 0.01, threshold, and 4096. So let's do a final render. The render is done. It only took 41 seconds. Compare the difference visually. This is 41 seconds for Vanilla 3.5, and this is Blender 3.4. As you can see, basically, they're identical image quality, but the time difference is 2 minutes and 30 seconds and 41 seconds. So I loaded the same overexposed monkey scene to the latest K cycles 3.5. We'll have the same final render settings. First all of 0 0.01 and 4096. Final render. So this is the K cycles final render. It took only 22 seconds. And let's compare that to 3.5 vanilla. So we have, so you can see, 22 seconds for K-Site Tools, 41, and you can see basically identical image quality. So it's almost twice as fast K-Cycles in this uh, overexposed monkey scene. I have loaded this Party Talk Blender scene into Vanilla Blender 3.4, as seen by Ian Hubert. Let's look at the new light tree sampling. It is main performance benefit is in scenes with many lights in which it can significantly reduce the render noise. In simple scenes like the BMW, actually slightly slower due to the overhead of the light tree, it is recommended to turn it off for simple lighting scenes. Let's do standard final render settings, 0 0.01 and 4096, a final render. So we just finished our party tag render and it took 4 minutes and 33 seconds. I've loaded the party tag scene into K Cycles 3.5. I adjusted the performance settings and the final render to 0 0.01 threshold and max 496. The key difference on this render setting is that we enabled the light tree on, which allows the new sampling algorithm for multiple lights to, to reduce the noise dramatically and in many cases also reduce the rendering time for the same quality. So let's do a final render. So I have finished now the render in K cycles with the light tree on and only took a minute and 16 seconds. And if you compare with the Blender original 3.4 without the light tree, 4 minutes and 33 and K cycle 3.5 only 1 minute and 16. So that's over three times faster. And not only that, but I zoom in and you'll see a noticeably less noise when you have the light tree on. I have zoomed in quite a bit just to show you the amount of noise that's still on the 
without the light tree on vanilla blender you can see all all that extra noise compared to with the light tree on with kesakos 35 very clean so it's a huge three times faster and we still have a, even a cleaner looking image i have loaded this scene from every motion the ai 58 scene 8 and let's look at the light tree and indirect clamping the blender default for indirect clamping is 10 and it is used to reduce the path tracer noise and fireflies but it dulls the areas of high brightness and has less dynamic range i will do a few renders to compare the different settings with the light tree and indirect clamping so i finished my renders look at the different options and, and how it affects the image quality first one is the light tree off and with clamping at zero Look at the amount of fireflies and noise on the glass, on the floor. Let's compare that to the default of blender of clamping at 10 with the light tree off. So it looks a lot less noise and cleaner, but look at the amount of dynamic light that got cut off. So we, all this reflection of the light behind the glass, all of that got clamped away. The image is a lot more duller and with a much smaller dynamic range. Now let's see the light tree on with no clamping. See, it is dramatically less noise in fireflies and only took about an extra second and a half to calculate the light tree. Compare that with a light tree off. It's a lot more noise. Look at the reflections on the floor. It's a lot cleaner. And all the fireflies all over the, the glass, the walls compared to the light tree on. But there's still a few fireflies if you look under the table, the fear, so they can still see a few fireflies so it's not as clean as we have with clamp 10 tree. So now let's do the light tree on with clamp of 10. Definitely clean up a lot of the flyers that we have here in the wall, but it reduce some of the dynamic light. We can see it on the, on the floor in the reflections and it's slightly on the, on the glass. Another thing to notice is that when you have a clamp of 10 with the light tree on, compared to the light tree off of clamp of 10, the clamping is quite different and they're not going to match. So it's something to, to notice that the clamping that you have with the light tree off is not going to match with the light tree on at the same clamping. The light tree basically does its own calculations and and it'll have a lot more dynamic range at the same clamping level, which it's what you want is more realistic. And the last setting that I did was light tree on and clamp of 50. In this case, I was able to increase a higher threshold of clamping to 50 to be able to get rid of some of the fireflies. I think if you zoom in here under the table, you see that the that clamping zero, there's a noticeable fireflies that are clamping 50 get cleaned up quite nicely. Definitely using some clamping but a much higher threshold can even help have a cleaner image and maintain the dynamic range pretty much to no clamping. Clamping of zero and clamping of 50 is almost the same but you are able to remove some of the fireflies without reducing the dynamic range which you want to keep to give you the best image quality and realistic lighting in your scene. So the last thing we're going to take a look at another demo scene from the Blender Foundation Spring. Testing it on first on the vanilla blender 3.5. Let's look at, at K cycles in this improved performance update and compare to the vanilla blender 3.5. Settings are the default for final render 0 0.01 and 4096. Let's do a render. So the render just finished. And it took 2 minutes and 55 seconds. And now let's do the same thing with K-Cycles. I've loaded the scene into K-Cycles, the spring scene, the same settings using 0 0.01 threshold and max samples of 4096. Do a render. So the render just finished and it took 1 minute and 43 seconds. Compare the image quality between Blender Vanilla 3.5 and K-Cycles 3.5. 255 look in the top left corner and 143 so 
So it's almost cut the time almost about 40% and the image quality looks virtually the same. Okay, Salcus can save some amount of time in your rendering. Understanding and using the overexposed adaptive sampling, which now comes as a default and is fully integrated into Cycles rendering. And the new light tree sampling allows for maximum quality and performance. Now with this update, you'll have the fastest K-Cycles to date. Thanks for listening.